Hi, Gary Cruz with GaryCruz.com here. If you're interested in transmitting HDMI over your home network over long distances, then watch this video. In today's video, we'll be covering the HDMI transmitters over IP by GoFanco. Traditionally, HDMI has a limit of 50 meters or so, and there's several options and when you want to consider transmitting HDMI over long distances. And there's a couple use cases. So for example, in the use case that I want to cover today, and the first one is that I have a security camera system where I want to transmit the live video feed to any of the TVs in the house. So if you switch onto video two, it'll switch over to that live feed. The reason why I want to do that is because my current ring doorbell is that when you when someone rings the doorbell and I load up the app, by the time the app is loaded, they're already gone. So if there's something going on outside, I can click on video two, whatever I'm watching, and it'll switch automatically to the cameras using this system. And the way the system works, well, let me backtrack a bit. The challenge with HDMI now is that typically HDMI has a limit of 50 meters, or sorry, 50 feet length limitation. Anything over 50 feet, you'll start to see dropouts. That also comes into play when you want to use uh, long distances. Now, in the video, professional video world, you would use SDI, which is a professional connect that allows you to transmit into long distances, or maybe you want to use fiber optic. Now you've probably seen the expensive solutions on Amazon, which is the HDMI over fiber optic. It has a fiber optic cable in between and it's got chips inside that converts the signal to fiber optic and on the other end it reconverts it back into HDMI. And then you have solutions like this by GoFanco which basically takes a transmitter, you plug in your HDMI to this, it converts it into something that goes over the ethernet and then as long as you have a receiver on the other end the ethernet that goes into here has an HDMI out and it'll transmit that to your video source. And that should also work over a switch, which I'll be showing here. All right, let's go ahead and get this unboxed. But before that, one other use case that I'll probably cover in my other channel is with live switching. You can see that I have uh, my laptop here that's connected directly. Well, my laptop's connected to this HDMI switcher and it's connected to this monitor. And you can see that there's zero latency. So one of the things I wanna test as well is how much latency does this produce? Because if I'm using this in a live situation, maybe I wanna make sure that the audio is in sync with the video. Maybe it's a live concert or maybe it's a lecture and I need to broadcast the video into other rooms. This might be a potential solution. So keep an eye out for that video on my Amaze Studios channel because that's where I cover live switching. But in this situation, you can either broadcast video from say a TiVo, your antenna over the air device, or in my case, security camera footage throughout your home. Now let's get into the unboxing. All right, in this scenario, I've got the transmitter and two receivers plugged in. I'm going to take the video that's going into this monitor and plug it into this transmitter. And then I'll take the ethernet, plug it in directly in between this one, between the transmitter and the receiver and see how that works out. So what I'll do is first take out the source, which is this monitor and I'll plug this in to the input right here. All right, so we'll plug this input right over here. Then I'll take this, I think this is over 100 feet of Cat5, Cat5e Ethernet. I'll plug this in to the transmitter right here. And the other end, 
I will plug this into the receiver. And then I'll take the output of this HDMI and plug it into the monitor. All right, so I've got the output of this, which is the receiver. And now I'll plug it back into this monitor. Okay, there we go. So I can see that there is a slight delay. Let me turn up the volume here so we can hear it. I'll use my editing software to determine the, the number of frames, but you can also pause it to determine yourself. Okay, so put that back on mute. All right, so you can see that it is receiving right here the, by the blinking light, and it's also um, transmitting it as well. Now, the next thing we'll do is I'll unplug this And let's just introduce a switch into this. So let's plug it right into my switch here. Okay, and you can see that it's waiting for a connection. So this switch is a Netgear switch. It's the GS110 EMX. And I'll plug in this other 100 foot, but this is a Cat7 cable. So now we have over 200 feet of network. And then going through the switch, and we'll go ahead and plug this in to the receiver. There we go. It reconnected, it says status connected, and the video is playing fine. All right, next, I've got this short patch cable. And I've got this third receiver plugged in here. Let's plug it into this. And also plug it into the switch. Okay, so now it's receiving. And let me get another HDMI cable and we'll plug it into the HDMI in of this Blackmagic Video Assist. This is a recorder. This could be because when I tried plugging the laptop directly into this, it wasn't working out. So that's kind of expected. Let's see, do I have another monitor? Let's do this. I've got a big TV over there. I'm going to unplug my camera. So just to show you what I've got going on here, you can see that I'm monitoring my camera on the TV. So what I'll do is I'll remove the HDMI from this camera. It's going to disappear from the TV and I'll plug it into the receiver that is also connected to the network. Okay, so I've got a pretty long, I think it's about a 25 foot HDMI cable. Let's plug that into this receiver. And there we go, we've got the signal being broadcasted onto the TV. Now it looks like, I'll be curious to see if it's matching the signal rate or at least the latency from both receivers because I could already see that the difference from the monitor, um, from the source, which is this laptop. To my eyes, the the receivers look like they're matched. Okay. So again, what we've got going on is we've got a transmitter going through the switch and it's broadcasting to these two receivers uh, through the network into the receiver and then that is then converted back into HDMI into these monitors. I have this device that measures lag. I have it connected directly to the transmitter and the transmitter is going through the ethernet cable into my switch, out of my switch into one of these receivers here. 
and then that going into the monitor. So let's take a look at the, the latency here and this will measure it pretty accurately. So it looks like it's about 172.9. All right, let's see what it looks like if I just plug it in directly. So I'll, I'll take it from the transmitter, go directly into the monitor because the monitor itself has some built-in latency, so we can at least calculate the real latency that's introduced between the receiver. So this monitor has a latency of 8.3 milliseconds. So I'll take the output of the HDMI switcher and put it into the input and into the input of the transmitter. And then I'll take the receiver and plug that back into this monitor. And I'll just switch one of my sources here to the TiVo. So this should be the TiVo. All right, so here's what it looks like tr transmitting from the TiVo. And then I'll also transmit it to the big TV as well. So let's go ahead and check that out. So I'm gonna take the camera output and put into one of the receivers. Here's the HDMI that was connected to the camera. And you'll see that this receiver has an HDMI output. I'll plug that right into here. And now it's showing up on the TV and it looks really clear. So in this scenario, when you're broadcasting TV throughout your home, this is a perfect scenario. In live situations, due to some of the latency, maybe not so much but it definitely looks good for a TV. It's really clear on the TV. And just so you can hear the audio, I won't, I won't broadcast too much of it because of, I don't wanna get pinged for copyright, but we wanna see if this is also broadcasting the audio here. Okay, so as you can see and hear, the audio is coming through just fine. Now let's try out these, trend, these IR blasters. Now we've got the IR out for the transmitter. So let's plug this in over here. So if I cover this and I'll pause it. Unpause it. Let me just do that again like this. And do it again with the receiver. Hey, you're home early. Yep, works fine. You'll never believe it. Please Pause and play. Gift. Pause. There's a little bit of latency, but it's about the same amount of latency that you see from the video. All right, so that's a test of the IR, and that will work over the network. Okay, in this final test, you can see that my video camera is hooked up to this system. However, I don't have my cameras hooked up directly into it right now, but I can see that this is my NVR that's in this case. Once I roll this back into the, into the closet and plug in the IP cameras, that should show up correctly. Uh, I have a switcher here that, or I have an HDMI switcher here, so imagine if you have a receiver that's outputting to this. It's all gonna be in 1080p. However, that's all the connections I have right now. They're all 1080p. But if I switch this over to, let's say my Mac, which is playing here on the left, that Mac display will then go into the transmitter, propagate to the network, and anywhere there's, an H, there's a network connection, I can put one of these receivers with HDMI output and plug it into a monitor and it'll mirror exactly what is being broadcasted from this transmitter. Same thing with the TiVo, if I switch over to the TiVo, and um, I think it's playing right now. It takes a second to switch signals, but once the signal gets caught up and queued, you can see that the TiVo is playing right here. And essentially, you don't have to have multiple TiVos in your home. So that's another benefit. So if you want to centralize your AV equipment into one room, which I'll be doing, and broadcasting the video throughout your home, this is a perfect solution for you. In live streaming situations, there might be some issues with latency,
but um, that shouldn't be an issue in a home because usually the TVs or monitors are uh, apart from each other and there shouldn't be an overlap of audio or video. So if this video was helpful for you, hit that like button and on the way out, please subscribe if you're interested in tech like this. Thanks for watching.